Our next presentation is on the ethics of civility. Civility. And our presenters will be speaking of our colleague, Phil Durst, who was beloved by so many. Chris Hahn is Vice President of Employment Law at Dell Inc. He joined Dell after 15 years as an outside lawyer representing clients in all kinds of labor and employment matters, including litigation, training, and counseling. Chris is a graduate of Rice University and the University of Texas School of Law and is board certified in labor and employment law. Tom Nesbitt is a founding member of DeShazo and Nesbitt in Austin, where he represents employers. Tom earned his JD from the University of Texas School of Law in 1998. He's been listed in Best Lawyers in America and as a super lawyer in the practice of labor and employment law. Previously, Tom was with the Austin office of Fulbright and Jaworski. He is board certified in labor and employment law. I had to do some internet sleuthing to make Tom's introduction. I recommend you read his bio in the materials. None of what I just read is in there. It reads like a social media profile, including his likes and dislikes. The one professional recognition he lists is being allowed to speak today about his good friend, Phil Durst. Thank you, Chris and Tom. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, my name is Tom Nesbitt, and I know Phil. I've known I knew Phil for about 20 years, and he was when I started practicing law in Austin in 1998 the gold standard of plaintiff side lawyers. And I know him mainly through being his opposing counsel in frequent cases and speaking with him. And, and as all of us did, loving listening to him speak at this conference and other conferences. You know, we are very lucky in the labor and employment bar across the state to have a very strong culture of civility. I think that is, uh, we have a stronger one compared to other practices. Um, we tend to resolve our differences on substance and not on personal attacks. And uh, of course, that's not always true. We had a, a, an Austin Bar uh, a presentation or a, a panel discussion on Wednesday of this week. And I really, I just kind of ask people to speak. And but as I'm introducing them, I get an email from one of our colleagues who says, Tom, you're the you're the leading in our entire bar. Who are you to lecture us on civility? And, you know, that was uh, Shafika Giratani. Y'all know Shafika. I mean, I've known her half her life. She's usually sweet, but uh, she had a good point. And Chris and I are not here to lecture anybody about civility. We are here to hopefully reminisce about Phil Durst. And, and I think, Chris, I may be stealing your thunder a little bit here. Chris made the point to me, you know, Phil Durst never lectured anybody about civility. He never threw rules at people or the lawyer's creed. He lived it. And so what, what I want to do first is just for those of you who didn't know Phil, say a few personal uh, words about him and talk me talk about him as a, as, as a human being. And then Christopher and I will kind of take turns sharing some stories of our own and from other people about Phil's great civility. Mm -hmm. Phil was passed away on October 1st, 2019. He was only 62 years old. Phil leaves a legacy of great legal skill of humor, of art, and also the lessons that he taught us about how to practice law with civility. And, you know, if we don't observe those norms, we, we will lose them. And I fear that when we lost Phil Durst, especially in Austin, we lost the heart and soul of that culture. And so we hope through remembering him to uh, try to preserve that culture. Phil was first and foremost a lawyer of great skill and ability, uh, UT Law School graduate 1982. He was a professor at the UT Law School for 20 years. He spoke at many conferences, including this conference every year. Many of you remember his presentations recently that were the what is it worth presentation. He would send out a set of hypothetical, common hypothetical case situations to plaintiffs, lawyers, and defense lawyers. And it was a survey and you were essentially asked to evaluate the hypothetical case and say what it's worth. And uh, Phil would then consolidate those uh, that feedback and, and, and analyze it and then presented it. It was always a very informative way. And I think it was one of the ways, one of the many ways Phil succeeded in uh, uh, bringing us together in some respect, helping us understand each other, helping us to understand where we agree on things, where we disagree on things. Uh, one of his many contributions 
to uh, to our bar. Um, I think it also spoke volumes of Phil's integrity that defense lawyers, I, I'm one of those, all the defense lawyers submitted our values to Phil with absolute certainty that he would honor what he told us, which is that I won't even look at these. He had a process. I don't know what the process was. I never asked him of treating those responses in an anonymous way, even to himself. And we trusted that Phil did that because we trusted Phil. And that speaks to uh, his great integrity. Phil fought for causes and supported causes in his life, including the Save Our Springs Alliance, uh, dedicated to preservation of our springs here in Austin. He was a founding member of the Texas Freedom Network. He supported the Equal Justice Center. Uh, Phil, of course, had a sparkling sense of humor. Lawyers, we're, we're not funny. We just aren't. Phil, though, was world-class funny. Uh, every year, his picture in the Austin Bar Association, you know, alongside all of everybody with their suits and their business coats, Phil's always was some ridiculous picture. Phil wearing a wrestling mask. Phil, um, you know, Phil running from the plane uh, in, in North by Northwest. Uh, Phil on the aircraft carrier deck uh, as George W. Bush. Uh, whenever he spoke at this or other conferences, Phil refused to be introduced by reading off his accomplishments. He would always write his own introductions, and they always began with our speaker. Our next speaker insisted that I read the following statement, and it was always something absurd and hilarious, and usually Phil was the butt of the joke, or maybe the introducer was the butt of a gentle joke from Phil. Uh, and Phil, Phil used his humor in the courtroom to great effect. I, I, in his last hearing that I was uh, adverse to him in, there were three parties and everybody was kind of looking around like preparing to fight over who would go first where there were these dueling motions. And so, but Phil just stood up and said, uh, Judge, I'm the most handsome, so I'm going to go first. Uh, and that's, you know, what were we going to say to that? Nothing. And he got to go first. Now, I, I, my memory has been challenged on that. Uh, somebody suggested that what Phil really said was, I'm the most handsome, so I'll be glad to go last. But either way, uh, Phil uh, used that sense of humor to great effect. His business cards noted, they bragged that his law office was air conditioned. Uh, at Phil's funeral in October, he wrote his own eulogy to be delivered at his funeral, and it was characteristically Phil. It was uplifting. It was hilarious. It ended with Phil from the grave insisting that they play the monkey song, I'm a believer, over the synagogue's speaker system, and he insisted that everyone get up and as they left, dance to I'm a believer by the monkeys. Uh, that's just the kind of guy Phil was. Phil was also an artist. M many of you may have memories of Phil at this conference, sitting out in the audience when he was not speaking, and he'd be tearing up pieces of paper, using scissors. Elizabeth fled us using scissors, uh, uh, you know, sewing things, tying things with string. Phil was creating his beautiful collage art. He was a serious artist, and many people in Austin knew Phil as a renowned artist. They didn't even know he was a lawyer. Uh, he would make this out of Starbucks cups, out of dumb, dumb wrappers, this kind of thing. Phil said this about his art. As quilts were traditionally made with scraps of leftover fabrics, I like to work with materials that have also been cast off or designed for other purposes. I enjoy working with paint chips, old books, candy boxes, and other packaging that all have such beauty, even though they were not designed to last. We, there would be many reasons to strive to want to emu, to want to, to want to strive to emulate Phil Durst, um, but I believe that the heart of who Phil Durst was as a professional colleague is someone who, even in the heat of conflict, was always civil. He was civil in a profession where it is hard to be civil. Um, and, and, and I, I've asked myself over the last few months, what was it about Phil, and how can I try to be more like him? I mean. Phil was so superbly talented as a lawyer that perhaps he was so confident that he didn't need to be uncivil as a crutch, as some of us do. Uh, it could be that he had such a, a natural self-deprecating sense of humor that it immunized him in some way from, from being petty. 
Uh, and it may be that he saw in opposing counsel and even in opposing parties some beauty in the same way that he saw beauty in these cast off scraps of paper that he created beautiful art out of. But whatever it was, Phil had it. And what I'm going to do is, is uh, uh, with Christopher Hahn is we want to talk about how he, that was not only uh, a trait that made it a pleasure to be adverse to Phil. It was effective. Phil used his great civility to be an effective lawyer uh, and one that, you know, people on both sides of the uh, of the bar want to emulate. And, and I'm going to, we're going to do a little bit of what Phil never would do. And that is, you know, I guess to get, you know, y'all all want your ethics credit. I want it too. And I think Phil would want us to have our ethics credit. So we're going to cite a few rules. Um, but mainly we want to tell this story about what Phil, through his actions, tried to teach us.